Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. In our show today, we'll cover the 2011 Energy Policy Forum Legislative Briefing and what it means to clean energy in Hawaii. We'll hear from leaders in the energy industry and in government, and we'll talk to a number of energy pace setters and experts who can tell us what progress we're making. The forum conducted the briefing in the Capitol Auditorium on January 21st. The forum includes federal, state, and local government, academia, utility companies, oil and gas companies, renewable energy associations, environmental associations, all committed to clean and sustainable energy for our state. For the past nine years, the forum has been working towards smart energy solutions to sustain a prosperous and secure Hawaii. We want to know how far we've come and what we need to do to get to our clean energy goals. We had opening remarks from Representative Hermina Morita, Chair of the House Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. What I welcome the most is the acceptance of the challenge to take charge of Hawaii's destiny to transition Hawaii to a clean energy economy. The forum hopes to let the public know what's going on, so it's formed a partnership with Hawaii News Now to create a series of TV episodes to cover the state of clean energy. Linda Brock is the producer. We're going to deal with everything from the economic impact and the impact it's going to have on Hawaii's job market when we get into a green economy. So it'll be a total of six shows that are going to start airing in February about every other month. There'll be vignettes on the air in between the shows to sum up the show that's already aired and talk about the show that's coming. But we'll also have a web component um, because, as I said, some of these interviews are just outstanding. And with the time limitation of television, um, we're going to take these interviews and put their extensions form online and invite the public to comment and um, have an interactive component there. It's almost more than we can believe and more than we've been allowed to believe in Hawaii in a long time. The reality is in energy of all of them we could actually lead the world. We've got to solve our problems and our problems that we have here in Hawaii as it pertains to energy are unique to Hawaii. We're not going to get solutions made for our little market here unless we make them ourselves. Now that is the potential. As a Hawaiian today, practicing malama aina means I acknowledge that we are facing an energy crisis. I acknowledge that I am part of it by consuming fossil fuel. When I took command, I said, okay, I found out what our electric bill was. It was $23, $24 million the first year, and it scared me because it's about a third of our, of our budget, and it just goes to pay the electric bill. Most of that money doesn't actually go to HECO. 80% of the money we pay for our electric bill just goes to somebody to pull oil out of the ground. It's about realizing that we have control over this. It's about realizing that there is a very real-term problem that we face today. You know, depending on who you ask, we're either past, at, or just about ready to cross peak oil. And what peak oil is, is a situation where we will never pump more oil than we have pumped out of the earth. Now the fact of the matter is once we have, you know, once we recognize that we pass that, the reality is prices will just keep going up. You know, we're actually not the most addicted to fossil fuel. There are actually mainland states that are 98% coal. You know, and that's almost a trap because coal is so cheap that states like that look at renewable energy and they go, why would I do that? We're on oil which is an expensive form of fossil fuel. So that's the bad news. The good news is almost any form of renewable energy works okay against oil. And if it's not today, it will within five or 10 years for sure. So our transition to renewable energy actually ultimately saves us money. As a people, we will be better off financially when we switch to renewable energy. When you ask me what has changed, well, a great deal has changed. We now have new business models so that we can work with Native communities in ways that respect their human rights. To think about the future, I reflect back on our past. Looking back, uh, some of the lessons learned is that we need to have brave and bold leadership in policy that will implement new policy and stick to their guns on those policies because that, in my mind, is one of the biggest reasons why we never got there with the original Hawaii Clean Energy Plan. I think personally DOD and the Marine Corps especially is leading the way with the entire nation. Uh, 
we're on board and we understand the importance of it. We understand how it's actually tied to national security. I kind of joke to people and say I don't have to run for office so I can make some of the rules as we're going along. But, but, but I'm backed by presidential executive orders. I'm backed by uh, things that the Secretary of the Navy wants us to do, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, the whole federal government to drive energy usage down. You know, this is a group that came together for that specific purpose back in the, if I remember correctly, back in the early 2000 time frame. And at that time, you know, we were all pretty much fighting with each other, whether it be the gas company, the utility, the electric utility, uh, different industry sectors, even mine. Uh, and we were all just kind of thinking, quite frankly, a little selfishly. And the forum provided this clearinghouse for us to get together, hear everyone's thoughts, uh, you know, voice our own. Uh, and understand, you know, that, hey, we are really trying to fight for the same thing. Keep to our belief system of Aloha Aina, but be flexible enough, for goodness sakes, to inform ourselves and work with others for solutions for our broader community. It's doing the right thing by the federal taxpayers. It's doing the right thing by the environment. It's a national security issue as well. If we share well among ourselves, we will be okay. In fact, we will be the envy of the world. We need to share. Uh, and sharing is two-way, and it's respectful, and it's, and it's done with great heart between people. And we, we have to find that way, too. It's not just take. Share is, is a gift. Uh, and we need, to, we need to encourage that gift and then honor that gift. From the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Hawaii News Now, Join Terry Okita for the first in a continuing series of programs, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Mike Hatman, co-chair of the forum, told us about the forum's most recent briefing. We need some uh, public dialogue on at least the, the major strategies that are proposed in the Clean Energy Initiative. And for those of you who have read the Clean Energy Initiative document, it is chock full of all sorts of proposals for all sorts of technologies. What are each one of these going to uh, contribute to our uh, Clean Energy Initiative goals? How much is it going to cost? Uh, how much is, what's it going to do to electric bills, who's going to own it, who's going to operate it, how long is it going to take to implement, and what are the major obstacles to getting there. The conclusions from the first session were a heck of a lot of progress has been made, but the most striking thing in terms of, of the uh, progress that's been made is the amount of renewable energy that, that's already either in the pipeline or, or actually up and operating. And there are 62 new renewable energy projects planned. These things are not in competition. Uh, we're going to need it all. Carl Friedman, the forum's regulatory reform chair, is facilitating a working group to design a report of metrics and changes to help us navigate the way to our goals. We're trying to measure progress towards state goals and statutory standards. We have statutory standards, uh, renewable portfolio standards, energy efficiency portfolio standards, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so one question is, you know, are we getting there? We want to know if we're helping reduce the amount of dollars exported from the state. And we're trying to develop some overall indicators of progress that might represent uh, where we're going. In doing all this, we're trying to come up with metrics and uh, some reports that are understandable to the general public. We need to develop some standards that are accepted and respected by the various stakeholders and the decision makers, the agencies that need to make decisions, legislators. We want things to be correct from a technical and analytical perspectives. The researchers in the state should be able to use some these metrics. Perhaps we can develop economic indicators. And of course, they have to be feasible to determine and update. We have, they have to be practical uh, in terms of how we frame them and how we periodically update them. We're just at the beginning of the process. The first part is to develop uh, some metrics to figure out what it is we want to express and how we might do that. Later we're going to be working on developing the data and the reporting methods. Steve Lindenberg, representing the Department of Energy, gave the keynote for the briefing, clean energy, have we come a long way baby or not? As far as the question, are we making progress? I think the answer is resoundingly yes. In 2009, the State Energy Office did a review of investments that have been made. The best guess was about $345 million was spent on clean energy investments in Hawaii in 2009. 
Last year, the best guess we have is about $900 million. So it's growing from nine to 10, almost threefold. We expect that it could be 1.2 billion or more in 2011. And there's much more to come. Representative Hermina Morita told us what policies are in play and what we should be watching for in the current legislative session. In order to keep the momentum going, funding, um, adequate staffing and resources are critical to this effort. We're shifting the paradigm of energy being an, uh, a drain on our economy to energy driving our economies. You know, although we've been successful in passing the barrel tax last year, what's happening with the money is it's supplanting current funding rather than supplementing funding to accelerate our progress. You know, various ve vehicles that will be introduced, delving into the financing, ownership, and regulation of the inter-island cable. I cannot tell you how important the cable and the two wind farms are in really advancing this transformation. The utility companies are making notable strides to reduce fossil fuel to renewable energy sources. Robbie Ahm, Executive Vice President of HECO, gave us a report on the excitement at Hawaiian Electric. And I'd like to suggest we all watch out for a few things. One is nimbyism. Everybody loves renewable energy until it comes to them next door. And at that point, it's like, oh, I love renewable energy, but not that one. You know, if, if we're going to allow that to stop us, we won't get anywhere. We just won't. Um, number two is, is zero-sum thinking, and, and Mike mentioned it. There is room for all. If you ever sat down and calculated how many megawatt hours it'll take to achieve 40% RPS, it's a staggering number. We can't shoot at each other, folks. Everybody should support everybody else, and everybody should be successful. We do need to be relentless. We do need to measure it. Carl is absolutely right, not talk, but measure. Uh, I would hope, though, that the other thing we do is, is in spite of everything that's led up to today and all the things that many of us have gone through, is to turn this into an exercise of joy. Hawaii in renewable energy and what we do will lead the world. David Bissell, Chief Operating Officer and Acting CEO of KIUC, the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative. KIUC, as most of you know, is a cooperative. We are owned by the people of Kauai. We have a nine-member elected board. Our board has a 15-year strategic plan that uh, has been recently been updated, and our vision is to be an energy solution leader. Built into our plan is an underlying goal to reach 50% renewable by 2023. We don't think that goal is aggressive enough. Um, what we're seeing and the projects that we're facing on Kauai and the opportunities we have, we feel we can meet the 50% requirement in as soon as five years. What are we currently working on in Kauai? We use a port we're looking at a portfolio approach to projects. There's no single sil silver bullet for us out there. Um, biomass is very important. We feel we have the potential to bring online somewhere between 7 and 27 megawatts of biomass. Smaller project, we have signed with a local uh, uh, Kauai producer, uh, agreement for Kauai sourced uh, biofuel. We signed four megawatts of, of PPAs last year for a photovoltaic. Uh, we desire to sign an additional three to five megawatts this year. Actually, we have one plant. Our first utility scale plant is installed in Kapa'a on Kauai. It's a one megawatt plant. And as of this week, we we're actually uh, receiving energy from that. Notable advances have also been made by our state regulatory agency, the Public Utilities Commission, PUC Chairman Carlito Caliboso told us about the Commission's achievements, challenges, and regulatory plans. Um, fortunately, the legislature has given us the authority to consider the need to increase renewable energy use in everything that we do. So this sort of helped us kind of balance the playing field in, uh, when we're looking at the traditional objectives. And I just wanted to briefly highlight some of the other initiatives that are going on to, to implement our, all of our policies here, and that energy metering, feed and tariffs, a renewable energy infrastructure program and decoupling, which we're implementing in various rate cases as we speak. But some have asked, and you know, reasonably, you know, should we be going even farther going and faster? As we implement clean energy policies, sometimes renewable energy is higher in cost. So that, of course, affects rates. And sometimes it takes a lot more investment, which affects rates. And as we implement more variable renewable energy, Sometimes it affects reliability of service. And of course, when you do energy efficiency, there's less sales, 
less revenues for the company, so that affects their rate of return. So there is a, there, at a certain point, you know, these two objectives kind of um, limit each other. In any event, I think you need to establish a clear mandate. Uh, you need to establish what the priority is, no matter which agency is given this authority. Then we heard from our energy industry pace setters. They represent companies and organizations that are paving the way in building the clean energy industry. First was Darren Kimura, the CEO of Sopagee. Are we there? Are we a global leader? Uh, no, we're not there today. We are at around 90% still dependent on fossil imports. Uh, and roughly speaking, again, with the calculated cost of uh, oil per barrel, uh, we're at about $6 billion going up. We tried this before. And I think it's critically important that with this restart, which we have now, that we don't miss the opportunity. So, you know, I have really three major thematic areas here. Pilot projects, renewable technology diversity, and new technology development. Inventing solutions here, building technologies here, and selling them around the world. I think that as we look to this legislature, the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, and the efforts of the Energy Policy Forum, we stay focused on these. Yes, definitively, absolutely, we can be that global uh, leader in clean energy. Alternative Energy Director of Castle and Cook Resorts, Chris Lavorn, told us how his company is doing in greening an island system in Lanai. We've got currently a 1.2 megawatt PV farm. Uh, that represents, when it is up at 100 percent, 10 percent of our uh, generation. We think we can bring on some more solar, some more PV, and ultimately out here in the future to reach 100 percent, you'll see the existing gens and a uh, combined heat and power generator on the island. If those can be converted to biodiesel, we believe this can be done. The other big chunk would come potentially from a large wind farm interconnect or a small wind dedicated specifically to Lanai. So we are very proud of uh, the La Ola solar farm, brought online in December of 2008, 1.2 megawatts. Here uh, we actually have this, our solar farm in the background, We've got a concrete pad ready for also an extreme power battery. We're looking to expand PV on the island and working with the utility to make that happen. Hawaii Energy's Director of Operations, Derek Sonoda, has been working on energy efficiency initiatives to reduce our use of fossil fuel. He told us what's happening and what we should be doing to advance energy efficiency. Hawaii Energy does report to the PUC and the commissioners. Uh, we carry out what their objectives are for how they feel that we should go. But we also take a look and work with everyone in the community. Um, we talk with the people who are in the energy efficient imp implementation part. They're the ones who provide the equipment. They do the servicing. We listen to their concerns. We talk with the business owners. We go everywhere. So what we've done this year, a little bit different, is we expanded that. That model was the one that traditionally the program has always done. We've added to that financial institutions, uh, manufacturers directly in all different aspects, and we've gone to other places that would know what would move a project forward. We're taking a look at projects, we're finding out what's our stuck, and actually asking the questions, how do we unstuck them? Mark Duda, president of the Hawaii Solar Energy Association, told us about the advances in renewable energy and what we need to do to continue the momentum. I think we actually are a global leader in residential solar water heating. Um, you know, you can show this statistically, you can show this in terms of the length of the market. I think that that's a big deal and again, I think we just take it for granted. The other thing is in addition to all of the projects and that type of stuff is that a lot of the innovation that's going on and the, you know, the advances is actually in the financial engineering that allows these projects to either proceed at all, whereas in the past they weren't financeable, they, they couldn't make it, or else to, to move into new portions of the market to, to reach people who couldn't previously uh, access these technologies. And I think that's actually where, where a real lot of the innovation is happening in the state. But although we kind of spend a lot of time fighting with each other about the, what's the best way, is this a good idea or isn't it, the, the, the real fundamental insight about what's going on in renewable energy and in energy efficiency is that we're all sort of working together. Maria Tomei, Renewable Energy Program Manager of the Hawaii State Energy Office, told us how the state is doing to achieve energy independence and what we can expect going forward. One way to understand our challenge, half of the materials that we ship into our state are fuels. You know, oil and refined products come into the state and the reason we're concerned, of course, is that that means that money goes out of the state and we cannot predict how fast or how much 
we have to spend to keep our economy running. However, we do have our own renewable resources and working together, we can get our resources into the mix. We need everything, and this has been mentioned many times before, not only on the electricity generation side, but also on the efficiency side and transportation as well. So we have a lot of opportunities to work together in many, many areas. Mike Gabbard, chair of the Senate Energy and Environment Committee, presented the closing remarks. I'm very excited because we are on the cusp of a new age of increased energy self-sufficiency in Hawaii. We are taking the first step in the 12-step process of kicking our state's addiction to fossil fuels. We can get clean and stay clean, and we cannot afford the relapse. I'm told by our energy office that we have officially 90,000 solar water heaters. Another 10,000 are undocumented, so that's 100,000 in operation. The number of PV systems, 4,000. Number of small wind systems, dozens. So if I'm invited to speak here next year, I will give you a report card, and hopefully these numbers will be doubled or tripled. We will continue looking at ways to facilitate the production of different forms of renewable energy, from biofuels to geothermal to ocean thermal, to hydroelectric, to solar, to wave, to wind. Everything is on the table. We need to create an energy buffet in order for our state to kick our addiction to fossil fuels. We met with some of the members of the forum after the program for a post-mortem. Here's what they said. I think it went very really well. Really well, really yeah, well. I was, I was very, really very pleased. pleased. It moved along. Um, I think everybody kind of stayed on message. I think it gave a good picture of where we're at as far as the development of renewable energy projects. Gave some sense as to the volume, the, just the sheer volume of projects that are actually getting started. Real projects, projects in, the ground. Yeah, yeah. in the ground and or at least at the, at the financing stage or at the permitting stage. I think we achieved not only getting the information out and the messages out, but I think there was a, a real coming together. There's a real, real energy of pulling together. Uh, we, we can do this. We can work together. Let's find out more. Well, in all, the presentations were informative and encouraging, and the people who came to listen were interested and enthusiastic, and everyone in the room was excited and committed to clean energy for Hawaii. Duke, that was, that was a great program, I have to say. Sharon Moriwaki really set up the, the, the list of speakers, and I moderated, but uh, I was following her lead. I thought her selection was terrific, and I thought the way they presented was good. The energy was good. I like this one better than the one last year, actually. But clearly, the Energy Policy Forum is way out front on this. It's got some great energy going, <laughs> and it is a leadership organization. So happy to see that. I am, too, especially because I work in the industry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and Jay, I think you did a phenomenal job as a moderator. <laughs> Thanks. I know you're kidding, but I appreciate it anyway. <laughs>
any new wrinkle or change to a bill, it's all high tech at the legislature. And you know, you've always heard me complain, you can't complain about government unless you get involved in the process. And it's just, it's just not fair. And now there's no excuse not to get involved. Yeah, you can do alerts, right? You can tell it to tell you when anything is happening with this bill. That's right. For every committee, every subject matter, it's very sophisticated. And even all the uh, legislators are on email. Uh, the other good thing is they keep track of your testimony. It's uh, archived, and they basically count the numbers, how many people are for, how many people are against. So uh, now that doesn't mean you can't get out and testify. It's important to show face, but you always stand by your testimony and make a couple of important points. But I say, if you're going to complain about government, get out there and be part of the solution, not the problem. Does this mean we'll have better policy now, Bill? Uh, can't guarantee that we'll have better policy, but at least you'll have had a chance to get your voice and in the system. And I think that's important, especially in this state. And especially now, more important than ever before. I agree. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriter. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. Jay Scheidler, through the Scheidler Family Foundation, is an active supporter of a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaiian Electric Company, Hiko and its affiliates Miko on Maui, and Helco on the Big Island are deeply committed to supporting the communities they serve. Galen Ho. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company which has a large presence in and commitment to Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, HTDC, is a state agency dedicated to developing Hawaii's high tech industry, diversifying our economy, and providing quality jobs for our people. That wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week, just like Duke does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a sponsor and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks for joining us on ThinkTech. Tune in next week for our show on some of the tech companies at Nelha, the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii Authority, near Kona on the Big Island. Aloha. I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. Thank you.